Have you ever had a, a kind of an experience where, where you're watching two people, um, you know, talk about something and you have no idea what they're talking about? I mean, maybe they're, they're like, they're, yeah. you know, experts or, right. you know, whatever. And, and your the eyes, time. yeah, it's just like, <laughs> what are you talking? And your eyes kind of glaze over. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocks podcast. I'm back with our good friend, Nat King Cole. <laughs> Nathan King. And uh, we're here in the studio. This is so fun. It's one of my favorite things is to actually be able to be in the studio with my guest. I wish I could do this with every guest and just fly them in to the Tulsa airport and say, hey, just come into our studio and, and record with me. But, you know, we're not quite there yet. So you're on your way. We'll we're see. on our way. Yeah. Maybe next year there we'll be go. able there to fly yeah. in every yeah, yeah. single guest we have and, you know, put them up in a fancy hotel and stuff. It'd be great. It'd be great. Anyway, but you just live down the street. So it's not far from me at all. No. So, yeah. It was yeah. easy for you to come. So welcome back to the podcast. We are talking this week about memorization and the power of memorization and how we can use that and instill that in our kids to help them memorize God's word and what that can do for them and just for their spiritual life, um, you know, for their relationship with the Lord. And so... Uh, that's what we're discussing this week. But before we get back into it, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, check them out, ctcmath.com. They are fantastic. They do such a good job. And I'm so grateful for them because they teach math to my kids and I don't have to do it. So ctcmath.com. Um, okay, so we're talking about memorization in Monday's episode, which if you guys missed that, go back and listen to Monday's episode. We talked a lot about the why of memorization. Right. What do you see as some of the benefits of memorization? Sure. So uh, memorization provides, uh, we kind of mentioned it on Monday, um, that it provides a lot of context. Mm -hmm. And and if I can, I'm going to unpack that just yeah, kind of a yeah, little bit because yeah. I think um, that, that kind of provides a lot of the benefits. There's a lot more to, mm -hmm. than just this, but one of the things that it does provide so well is context. And we talked about it for conversations, but but it also has this kind of ability. Have you ever had a, a kind of an experience where where you're watching two people um, you know, talk about something and you have no idea what they're talking about? I mean, maybe they're, they're like, they're, yeah. you know, experts or, right. you know, whatever. And, and your the eyes, time. yeah, it's just like, <laughs> what are you talking? And your eyes kind of glaze over or, or in, in kind of worse yet, mm -hmm. you know, you're listening to a teacher and the teacher's trying to explain something to you, but you're just not there. You, you can't grasp what they're right. talking about. It's too much or whatever. Or you're a new homeschool mom and people are talking oh, about homeschooly yeah. type things For and sure. using all these weird homeschool words. And you're like, what in the world are Absolutely. they talking about? And, and, and no one's trying to be, you know, right. non-understandable. Right? Right. Did I just make is that a word? word? I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I sometimes I do that. You know, you kind of do now. this. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> non-understandable. Um, but anyway, but but if, if, you know, if, you, if you're listening to those people and your eyes are glazing over, I would submit to you that part of the reason why that is, it may be just that you've used your brain too much and all that kind of stuff. But, but one of the reasons why that might be is because you don't have those words they're talking about mm -hmm. at your ready recall, right? You don't have right. a memorized context mm -hmm. that you can actually engage with. There's something called schema, which okay. is, this is, this is kind of edgy speak, right? But, but it's this, this idea of the stuff that you know about something. Okay. You know, you have a schema about your podcast. Okay. You have a schema about your family. You have a schema about homeschooling. And anytime that you deal with something pertaining to whatever that is, whatever your schema is on, on say your husband or something. Um, if, if, if you guys are having a, a great time, you know, you're, and you're making a decision, you're being, you're bringing that information about your husband through your schema of your husband to have a solution, right. To have a conclusion to whatever you're thinking about. Right. If it's homeschool, let's say you've had a very, um, you know, you had a great homeschooling experience and, and something kind of t tough happens. Well, you kind of draw that through your schema, your experience, your, okay. what you know about homeschooling. And, and you might be like, well, it's not that big a deal. Right. But if you had a very negative homeschooling experience, mm -hmm. right. And something negative happens, you're going to try to draw that through that schema again. And you might have a very different conclusion, a very different end point mm -hmm. because of your schema. Now I talked about that, that's like experiential schema, but, but this is also like informational schema. So if you have a person who's an expert and you ask them a question about, mm -hmm. you know, what they're, they're actually an expert on, sure. they may have a very different solution or answer than a layman who just kind of maybe knows something a little bit about that. Sure. Thing, right. It, it, because they're drawing it through schema. And so if you're able to increase your schema, mm -hmm. you're suddenly able to engage in conversation about something to a greater mm -hmm. degree, even if you're not like actually like verbally conversing, yeah. you're able to like engage with that person. So, um, mm -hmm. for example, if, if someone is talking about, you know, something that's 
really high flute. My dad it was a um, was an anthropologist um, oh. in college. He actually became okay. a pastor later on. So okay. that was, that was oh, kind of that's fun. interesting. Yeah, um, <laughs> but but he was having a conversation one time. I actually saw him like actually engage with mm-hmm. anthropological you know know how. There's some scientist guy he met one time, and I was privy to their conversation. I have no idea what they're talking about. Now, I was fascinated because I'm a nerd, but right. but at the same time, like on some level, I'm like, I don't remember anything they're talking about. Right. And my eyes could have started just kind of glazing over unless I knew right. what they were talking about, right? If I knew what those words were, mm-hmm. if my schema included that information, I would not have gotten bored, right? right. Now, again, nerd, I didn't get bored, but lots of people, you know, if you're listening to something that's, that's just drawing on and on, yeah. You're going, oh my gosh, this is so right. painful. Yeah. You don't have a schema for right. that. Like if I were to listen to someone talk about video games, for instance. It, I, I'm I assuming that's a thing for you. I die of boredom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would not. <laughs> right. you know? yeah, that's a, yeah, but, but no, but that's exactly right. And so, yeah. but if you understand something, I, I learned um, when I was in uh, doing my student teaching, mm-hmm. um, I learned a lot about football. Mm-hmm. And suddenly I loved football. I didn't used to like it at all mm-hmm. because I didn't understand it. Right. But suddenly yeah. my eyes weren't glazing over anymore. I was like, oh, I understand what they're doing and I get it, you know. And and, and that was exciting to me at that point. Yeah. Like I still like football. I don't follow any of the teams. Right. I don't have time. <laughs> but I do like football now. Yeah. Um, whereas I didn't before. And so um, so one thing that's amazing about memorization is it actually provides it, it can it can bust boredom. It can actually make mm. it so you're no longer fighting that problem of not having the schema that you need to engage in the conversation. Right. Even just mentally. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's so interesting. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge benefit. It's interesting that you would say that it would bust boredom because one of the things that I'm thinking about memorization is I don't have time mm. to mem- memorize as a, as a mom, as a very busy mom. Right, you are. I don't have time to sit down and memorize. Like I'm doing it. I just read a book last week for the like cover to cover for the first time in- I was gonna say, that's kind of rare for uh, you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, from the like- in months. It's right. been a really long time since I've read an entire book um, because I just simply don't have time. And so right. like I'm thinking, you know, as a homeschool mom and a mom who's just trying to keep up with my kids and my laundry and my house and homeschooling and all the things. When when do you even have time for schema? To build that up. When do you have time to memorize? Um, and so but for kids, I could certainly understand and see how like. Don't sit there bored out of your mind. Right. Go learn something, go memorize something and how that can build, build their brain power. I mean, I mean, there are so many benefits to. Absolutely. There's so many benefits to memorization, but I'm just saying, you know, in, in the world of boredom, like I never, I'm never so bored that I want to memorize something. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just not. Well, and let, let me, let me flip it on its head a little bit okay. because, um, so we have a program called Bible Quest. Yeah. I actually, um, it was like about a week ago, week and a half ago, I was actually using my own program for myself, like I was, I was memorizing specifically the information in mm-hmm. that we provide for Galatians. So we actually, there's like a look, some points of things you're supposed to memorize about, you know, what's in Galatians. Right. Yeah. And, and I was doing that uh, partly just to do my due diligence because we have my kids memorize it as well. Yeah. But, um, but then I read Galatians after I got that pretty solid down, yeah. I started reading Galatians. Now I I've done that, that work before to build that right. I, I, I've, I've researched and done all that kind of stuff, but I never just sat down and on that specific week mm-hmm. memorized it real, you know, hardcore. Right. But I did. And then all of a sudden when I opened Galatians, it, it like opened the word to me. Wow. And the reason yeah. why I say that is and, and, like, I was, I was noting things that corresponded. Mm-hmm. I was noting things that, man, I wish I could have gotten that in there. Right. Like, like I was having an ongoing conversation in my head that never was there wow. when I'm just reading it. That doesn't mean I didn't have any comprehension, but sure. my comprehension went through the roof yeah. after I memorized just this little list. I was noticing the things that were there, the things that weren't there, mm-hmm. uh, you know, relating things to it. it. It just gave me, it gave me this, this tool, just a constant context in my head that I was then able to use to learn more about God's word. And yeah. I, I just thought that wow. was, yeah. So reading comprehension yeah. can go up as a result of memorization. If you're memorizing something that's pertaining to what you're going to be reading, yeah, try that yeah. and see wow. what happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. All right, yeah. we're gonna break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts, and we say, this is what you do, step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com.
We are back with Nathan. Um, did anyone ever call you Nate? Is that ever? Yeah, like occasionally, me? but yeah. not typically. Not typically. I don't. I don't mind. It's kind of like Brooklyn. Yeah. Like she's Brooklyn. She's. We've never called her Brooke, but some of her friends Every now once call in her a while. Brooke. Right. It's kind of weird. I did have in a room- certain circles. She's Brooke. Okay, she's Brooke. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. I'd had a roommate that was Nathaniel. Oh. And so it was Nathan and Nathaniel, and we almost got this guy. Um, Nate to join us. Oh, <laughs> we, we tried. But that would be confusing. Yeah, yeah. We're trying. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So we're talking about memorization. Um, let's talk about how to memorize. Okay. Yeah, sure. This, this is a, a true skill. We've talked about the why. Absolutely. Th- this is what every mom needs to know. The this how, how to do it. Yeah. How to do it. How do we do this? Absolutely. So if you break memorization down into like what it actually kind of, you know, practically is mm-hmm. it, there, there's kind of three elements. There's frequency, duration, and intensity. Okay. And, I, and full disclosure, I absolutely learned this from Andrew Pudua. Okay, okay. so I, I, I want to give full <laughs> full disclosure on that. But um, but that frequency is the idea that you do things, you know, over and over again, right? right. And in short succession. And so if I'm just going to say, like, it's not that people do this anymore, but when you memorize phone numbers back when you were a kid, yeah. you know, and yeah. you just said over and over and over again, we know how to memorize, right? We know if we have to, we know. We know yeah. how to do it. Right. And it's through frequency. You just do it over and over and over again until you finally do it. Um, and and that that kind of gets it into the brain, at least in that short term, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, for the time that you need it or, you know, whatever, like you said, for your tests, you know, that yeah. kind of a thing. That was kind of a frequency idea, right? right. And so um, if we do things, you know, with, with frequency, we can get in our brain so we can actually kind of use it. And, and for a short period of time, we can we can have that available to us. There is this next kind of idea, though, of duration, where we actually revisit that over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So an example of frequency is if I called you, there's this this word in uh, scripture, it's paraclete, right? Mm -hmm. Paracleo, which means, you know, the one who comes alongside. It's the Holy Spirit. And this is what, you know, Jesus is talking about when he says, you know, I'm going to send one who comes alongside, the helper. Um, And so you can say that paraclete means a helper. Right. Okay. Well, if I called you, because I'm trying to teach you, right? I'm going to call you and I say, hey, Yvette, you know, um, paraclete means a helper. All right. And the next day I call you, paraclete means a helper. Next day I call you, paraclete means a helper. Like it, it wouldn't take so long and you probably right. have a pretty good idea that paraclete means the helper. Watch, ask me. Okay. What does paraclete mean? Helper. There you go. <laughs> okay. So that's true. You know, and, and so you, you would, you would kind of get that because you, because every day you're getting that same thing, right. right? Well, what if I did it once a month for a year? Okay. And I said, paraclete means a helper. Paraclete means a helper, but I only did it once a month. Mm-hmm. That would be an example of duration. But the reality is you probably would still remember it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and what's interesting is you actually might remember it for longer, hmm. okay? Because you actually had duration. You took it right. over a long period of right. time. Now, you might get a restraining order against me, <laughs> but that's a different problem, right? No, but, but, but that's, that's the idea yeah. of duration. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's maybe not as frequent, but right. it's over a long period of time, yeah. okay? And so um, what's neat about that is, is when you understand that, mm-hmm. you can say, okay, look, I know I have to do frequency maybe up front just to mm-hmm. get it so the kid can use it or, or the student or, or myself you know, mm-hmm. can use it. I can do frequency, but then I can drop to duration, Right. Mm-hmm. After I get that frequency, after I have that usable, you know, whatever in my brain, right. now I can go to duration. And so maybe it's only once a week I have to revisit that. And yeah. that's kind of like, you know, you know, memory verse cards. You know, right. people, yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you can do that. You can just kind of yeah. write a verse on a card and, and you just look at it and, and you memorize it, you know, so you can kind of kind of get it. And then you just kind of, you know, revisit it on your car dashboard right. or you know, not while you're driving, <laughs> uh, you know, but maybe like yeah. or, or when you're brushing your teeth or, you know, people do all these different kinds of things right. just so they have kind of that duration idea. Right. Right. And it works. Yeah. And so over time you, you, you have this, this duration makes it so that your memory sticks yeah. for long, long term. There is this kind of third element and that's intensity. And I see this kind of in two sides. There's okay. kind of emotional intensity and intellectual intensity. Okay. And the emotional is like the, just like the emotional impact of the circumstance. Right. So if I said, um, Yvette, if in one year you can remember that paraclete means the helper, I'll give you $1 million cash. Mm-hmm. I'm not making that offer, but if I did, <laughs> you heard it here on the school house did, podcast, we're going right. to, we're going to edit out the part where you just said, <laughs> I'm not making that offer. And, just like, and then it. it's going to be real. I'm sorry. It's right there. Yeah. I will call fake news. No. Anyway, but, but, um, but, but in one year, the, I mean, the emotional impact of that would be, would probably be enough. Um, if nothing else to spur you to have some duration, right. right you're going to, you're going to go over sure. it. Time. But, but it might be enough actually emotionally for you to remember that in one year yeah. it's possible. Um, and we've all, we all know, you know, very high or very mm-hmm. low, you know, I should say very positive or very negative emotional, mm-hmm. um, experiences mm-hmm. can be very memorable, right? Yeah. We know that. So that's an example of intensity. Um, there is also this kind of idea of intellectual intensity where you you kind of design the thing, mm-hmm. whatever you're trying to memorize, to be easily memorizable. And that's where we're going to get into kind of the tools. Right. Um, uh, you know, whether you make stuff that's like, you know, in rhyme. Yeah. Right. If it rhymes, 
that's a whole lot easier than right. when it doesn't, right? right? You know, you can do some of those things. And so that's kind of how you memorize in general. If you understand those things, okay. you can say, okay, look, I want to memorize this thing. I know I'm going to have to spend some time with my, my student, you know, mm -hmm. for 15 minutes or whatever, doing frequency. Right. But then I know for the rest of the week, I can just kind of hit that again every day mm -hmm. and, and maybe, you know, for two or three weeks. And then maybe once a month after that, you know, there's ways to do this right. so that you can kind of leverage these elements to right. maximize your, your memorization. Right. So give us an example of what this would look like in a homeschool sure. day. Sure. For, or I shouldn't say a day, because this is going to be more than a day, but in, in your homeschool for right. your family, because I know your family is really good at memorization. Thank um, you. So talk about what this looks like in your family. How do yeah. you go about doing this with your kids? Yeah. And, so, and, and again, this, this is not just, of course, God's word. I mean, this can be anything. Okay, yeah, memorization right. for anything. Sure. Um, but in general, mm -hmm. um, we will spend time on that memorization, but then we, re we will revisit. We have tools that let us mm -hmm. do that. So specifically with Bible Quest, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is I'm going to bring my Bible Quest book out and I'm going to say, okay, let's go over it again. Now I bring it out partly because they're better at memorizing than I am. So yeah. sometimes I refer. <laughs> I'm just saying, I know what I'm doing. I mean, you know, that, that, yeah. It's a tool. It's helping me. All I have to be is the tutor. Right. right. But as we go over it, I'm going to add some things when we're first going over it. I'm going to add some things that allow for easier memorization. And mm -hmm. that's where some of these tools come in. So I will a lot of times do actions. OK. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, when we're talking about, you know, um, Galatians are people from Galatia. That's one mm -hmm. of the things you just need to know that yeah. you know, the Galatians that they were a people group. Uh, or I'm sorry, it's a region. But anyway, so you have Galatians. So we use a G, you know, so we say mm -hmm. Galatians are people from Galatia. You know, uh, Paul told the Galatians that we are not saved. We are not saved by what we do, you know? And mm -hmm. so we have these very specific kinds of things that we we set up, you know, actions, yeah. this kinesthetic sort of reinforcement mm -hmm. helps not only to memorize faster, it's true, you can right. do that, but it also helps you to memorize uh, for a longer period. And we always do the actions again and again and again. Sure. So later on when we, um, you know, recite it, we don't have to do the actions, but mm -hmm. we probably will be twitching a little bit when right. we recite because yeah. you kind of want to, <laughs> do the, you know, that kind of a thing. But um, so, but we'll, we'll take time to actually build those tools. Okay. Mm -hmm. If there's going to be song, if there's going to be, you know, if we can put something in a rhyme yeah. or if we can put something in some sort of like alphabetical order, mm -hmm. or maybe like an acrostic, um, you know, that kind of thing. If we can do that with the information we're trying to memorize, you yeah. know, we, we'll do that. Um, uh, Bible quest does that with song, yeah. um, with the verses. I mean, I love song mm -hmm. because it is so yeah. accessible quickly, right. you yeah. know, kids memorize songs. I, I, oh, for sure. My girls know songs that we never listen to at home, but they hear them in the, like stores and restaurants. Like twice. Yeah. And, and I'm like, know it. how do you know this song? We would never listen to this in our home. Right. And they're like, I don't know. I mean, in the restaurants we go, I'm like, we need to go to new restaurants. I, I, mean, know. I don't know. We have this but conversation it, too. We're like, how so do bizarre. you know that song? Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's that capacity to hear it right. just a couple of times. And because it's in song form, right. it just gets stuck in their head. And frankly, Yvette, it's our fault. We trained our kids to memorize well. Right. I mean, if, if, you, if you've done memory, <laughs> your kids get better at memory. You know, whatever their capacity is right now, yeah. as you train them to memorize and right. you train yourself to memorize, right. you gain acumen in right. memorization. It's just true. Yeah. 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 Okay. So using these tools like, um, song or motions, right. things like that. Right. And then you would, you go through it every day for several days until they memorize it. Mm -hmm. And then you, do you repeat it like maybe once a week or once a month, or do you just continue to kind of stretch it out? Yeah. So, yeah, so typically what happens is we don't, a lot of times we're going to come back to it again when, right. we, when we revisit it. Bible quest is built to actually come back, you know, every, okay. every couple yeah. of years. And so we'll hit that again. And, and when we've done that in the past, um, I, I did it actually like full bore, mm -hmm. um, in our church back in, in Kansas. Yeah. And so my kids would hit the same content over and over again. And, and, you know, the master just came right back every yeah. single time. And so we were, we were practicing duration at that point, right. Even yeah. though it's a year later, right. you know, and some, some of that content we didn't actually go over again. Yeah. Yeah. Until that next that next year, uh, some we did. You know the songs specifically because I'm I'm so big on songs. Yeah, um, we could have a whole yeah. podcast just on songs. Oh yeah. Um, I just, won't sing. No, well, but, but building them, but building them, and they're like yeah. what goes into that and everything. It's, it, there's there's a lot to that. Sure. Um, but um, and I, I love what that is, and I, I work with the five, four and five year olds at our church. Yeah. They let me do this. Yeah. <laughs> they actually let me do my song stuff at the church. It's so fun. And we do like voices, and we do yeah. all this stuff, and and so what we'll do there is we'll we'll introduce the song. You know, right. we'll do the actions. We'll do you know any, any voices we're gonna do. If mm -hmm. We're gonna do you know Larry cucumber voice. Right. So we're going to do pirate voice, you know, whatever we're going to do, we're, we'll do that to make it kind of, you know, fun or whatever. Right. But then we hit it again, but I have these, these verses on cards. Right. And so what I'll do is I have the ones we've already memorized. Yeah. I'll have the kids pull one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I put it aside mm -hmm. so that we don't do it again. 
right? right. And so, and then, and then, and we do it, and then they do pull another one, and so on and so forth. And so I go through my whole deck, and then I bring the whole deck back out again, right? Mm-hmm. And I may only do like three in a week, right? You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. But eventually, I'm going to hit them again. And so I built that system to mm-hmm. allow me to do duration. Yeah. That that's what I was doing. Yeah. And so that's kind of, I know I just answered your question with like church and home, yeah. but that's, that's yeah. kind of the tools that sure. we use is we'll, we'll, we'll introduce strongly. Mm-hmm. And then you try to leverage, you know, with whatever system you're going to be using to make sure that duration happens. Um, and then intensity, I hope they enjoy it. Yeah. You know, and of course, if I've done my job on building the content, yeah. then that, that, that helps with that intellectual intensity. Yeah. Yeah. And also even, you know, like with our girls, like I said, we, for years, we've worked on memories, just memorizing God's word with them. And we didn't use any songs or motions or well, some we did motions with, um, but we would just say it over and over again. But what we would do with them, this was so funny is we, we had a a fireplace in our house that, that they were in, you know, for a good part of their childhood, um, that we lived in. And so their fireplace was their stage Mm. and they got to stand up on the fireplace on the stage and if you could imagine which of my children was the most animated one, you know, we had one who was just super animated. Um, but even for my one who wasn't super animated, she would stand up and, you know, and they would take a bow after that. Like, so even though they didn't have, you know, motions for most of the things that we were memorizing and we didn't do it to song, we set an environment for them that was fun. We didn't just sit, you know, and, and I mean, this is something that I think a lot of people when they're first bringing their kids into their home to homeschool them is they think of course that they need to set up their homeschool like a traditional classroom. Right. We do that too. You sit still, you sit with your hands in your lap, you know, you've got maybe a carpet square (sighs) or something and you sit quietly and you learn. Well, that's not how kids learn best. Kids need to be moving their bodies and they need to be, you know, some kids learn best to draw, you know, maybe it means them doodling while they're memorizing, depending on their learning style. Absolutely. And so it's just so fun to be able to be the ones as their parents teaching them at home who can create the environment for them so that they are best able to learn what it is we're teaching them. And so, so I say that because I don't want these moms to feel like, well, I don't have a song oh, yeah, for, for sure. this particular right. verse that I want my kids to learn. I don't have motions. You don't need to no, have you that, don't. but mm-hmm. let your kids move. Let them, you know, do somersaults across the living room floor, whatever right. works for them. And they'll tell they, you don't even need to ask them just see what they do. Yeah. And they'll do it. And so, so anyway, it's fascinating, but we are out of time again. So we're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to continue talking about memorization. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you've not left a review for this podcast, would you please go leave a review? It can be a rating. It could be a review. We love the written reviews because uh, that really does help people to know why you enjoy this podcast. And um, we have gotten so many new reviews lately. It's very exciting. And so thank you for those of you who have left reviews, um, but please do that. We would love that. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye. We know that we are called to put on the armor of God. So we are teaching our children to be salt and light in the world, but we're not putting our children out onto the front lines of the battle until they're ready. We need to look at our children and realize they can't be salt till they've got salt. And if the salt's contaminated, then it's no good for anything. That's what the scripture says. And they have to remember that because of our sin nature, it's more likely the culture will influence our children rather than the children the culture. So how can we send them out into the world until we have prepared them? You don't send a knight out to fight until he's prepared with all the armor that he needs. So the front lines really in the culture right now, what is up for grabs in the culture? It's truth. Truth is what's in the crosshairs right now. And until our children are steeped in truth, until they know truth, until they can defend truth, we would never put a defenseless child out on the front lines. And education is a frontline battle. It is not a sideline battle. It's not something that's happening in the periphery of our lives. This is happening in the culture in real time. This is the front line of the culture. This is where the battle for truth is being fought and it is where the battle for truth is being lost. And so we do not want our children out on the front lines. We are training our children to go out onto the front lines. And so to me, when we talk about salt and light, I say, let's put the people out on the front lines who are trained and ready for battle.